Hey all, your OS reviews. Today we're taking a closer look at the Vobot Mini Dock. This is a multifunctional smart charging and display dock, which is unique because it has a built-in display, which allows it to run custom mini apps to show information like time, weather, countdown timers, you can even program and create your own. Here are some examples shown, and even can play back some mini games, which makes it kind of an interesting alternative to something like the Davoom Ditto. Pixel art inspired Bluetooth speakers that we've seen in the past. In a similar sense, it can act as a desk gadget, as you can tell there, and also has some mechanical knobs that you can turn to control the dock. So the back has various ports, including the aforementioned Type-C for charging, in addition to a USB Type-A port for connecting thumb drives and other keyboard and mouse accessories, as well as HDMI and Ethernet if you don't want to use Wi-Fi, for instance, with your laptop. And there it is. It also lights up there on the back, which looks quite neat. You can use it with multiple devices simultaneously as well, and the display output here is rated at 4K. That being said, this particular dock does not have a built-in microphone, so one feature that you won't find will be voice input. So the packaging here is quite eco-friendly, but on the inside we have just the mini dock itself, along with a USB Type-C to Type-C cable that can be used for power, connecting it to your computer. And you also find a quick user guide. In this particular instance, it is worth checking out because we have some of the specs reiterated. So charging supports up to 100 watts, power delivery via that Type-C port, so you can quickly top up any MacBook, any ultra-portable laptop without any issues. And it features both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth inside of the dock. The screen is technically 2 inches, it supports Python for customized app development as well. When you're trying to connect this to your computer or to your phone for setting up some of those mini apps, it actually just uses a web URL as opposed to a dedicated companion app that you have to download on your phone through the store, for example. Here we have a relatively standard 6.5 inch screen smartphone. You can tell that it's actually going to be more petite than it, easy enough to just take with you if you are on the go. That being said, this mini dock does not have a built-in battery, so just keep that in mind. It will be just operating off of your computer or a power supply. So on the edge here we have the port that plugs into the PC, 90 watts, and then on the other end we have two more USB 3.0 Type-C ports, and on the back here we have another power delivery 100 watt charging input, as well as the full full-sized HDMI, again supporting 4K, Ethernet, and one USB Type-A port. So I guess one slight con is it doesn't have quite as many Type-A size ports as perhaps more conventional docks we've seen in the past, and maybe give you two or three, but it is what it is. Again, super compact, and the shell on the back is indeed translucent, so you can kind of make out the circuitry PCB board down below, along with some soft-touch rubber on the very bottom that prevents it from sliding around on a surface. Otherwise, we have kind of a dot matrix style display for the time information, and then the 2-inch screen is actually located on the edge here. The rotary dial here is mechanical, feeling pretty tactile, although it is made out of plastic. And by the way, you also find an optional controller pad that can be bundled with the mini dock. Even though it looks like this was originally designed for VR as a gamepad for smartphones, because again, the mini dock has built-in Bluetooth, you're able to pair this remote to it, and you can use a wireless remote instead to flick through the various different widgets and custom cards on the device. By the way, it takes two AAA batteries that can be replaced instead of being rechargeable. And plugging it into power, we can tell there is a LED light strip on the very rear that starts to glow to kind of take advantage of the translucent back here, just making it pop a little bit more in a darker environment. It does look quite cool. And the clock here also starts to flick to life. It also tells us to set up Wi-Fi first by connecting to a phone or laptop. And then typing in the URL into our browser, you'll be able to see the setup page. It tells us to then connect and share our actual Wi-Fi router information with the robot so it can then connect to the internet. So it'll be able to automatically refresh info like weather by itself in the future. And like other Wi-Fi enabled clocks, the time information will be synced automatically over the internet. Day of the week is also shown down below. So we can download any firmware updates just by tapping above here, and those will be pushed over automatically as well. Seconds for the kind of firmware to then install itself and then update, and now we are good to go. So the connection seems relatively quick, and we can then cycle through some of the main functions, including here on the very top, there is a game emulator. That'll bring us to a page that looks something like this, where we can also customize the time zone manually, and also set up information from the various widgets. Under experimental, we can find the screen mirroring and also game emulator. So more specifically, it supports NES retro games. Uh, so you're able to play back these, again, more classic titles from the past on this 
mini dock since the processor is good enough to handle a little bit of that retro gaming. And here's Super Mario World as an example. So after you extract the .nes file, we'll click on upload. Now it's telling us to connect to the Bluetooth controller. And afterwards, it's able to locate all the ROMs that we push over. So if we are trying to leave this, we can then tap on the bottom key and then choose on something else, like let's say Tetris. And then once again, this one is loading up from 1987. You can click on Start. And as you can tell, they're using the D-pad of our controller. We're able to maneuver things up, down, left, and right, as well as play back this classic kind of arcade game there. Again, some of those ROMs, if they're a little bit larger in file size, or if it exceeds the disk space inside of the mini dock, it may not be able to be playable or pushed over into the system memory, or you may have to delete some before making enough space for some newer titles and games. So that is one area where, again, if you are primarily using this for playing back those retro games, keep that in mind. Perhaps they could consider Consider adding in something like a micro SD card slot in the future so that if you are using it as a retro emulator you can expand on the built-in storage but overall again working as you would expect and actually doing a fairly good job as just a tiny little again mini display dock and USB hub by having this extra functionality. And speaking of the file size limitation, again, these ROMs are not able to exceed one megabytes uh, in terms of size for it to be transferred over into the built-in storage of the mini hub. So not the largest amount of space built on in, but anything that's more complicated, including perhaps ROMs that have, let's say, a dozen or hundreds of games in one, will probably not be able to be installed since their sizes are larger. But for, again, single purpose games, simple ones like this, it can probably run, or I should say store, maybe three or four titles at once before you have to swap them out. The next function over is screen mirroring. It is a little silly because the screen size is so small, but also fun and perhaps kind of a geeky hack sort of way, and you're able to use operating systems like Windows, Mac, as well as Android to mirror the screen. So for Windows, it requires this particular program that you can install on your computer, and then tap on Apply to share your screen. Whereas for, let's say, Mac, you'll be able to use these instructions. And finally, for Android, it looks like there is a app that we have to install in order to run this. It's using a VNC server allows you to enter a port as well as a password number that you can then share with the mini dock over here, as well as the IP address of your phone, and it will then be able to mirror the screen. Albeit, it seems to be only doing the corner region up top over here, as you can tell, kind of zoomed in. However, at the very least, it still is functional. If we kind of move around the UI, you can tell that it shows a kind of magnified version of what the phone is seeing at the same time, and there is just kind of a momentary lag, again, similar to screen mirroring on a larger TV. And the next mini app is going to be the Pomodoro Countdown Timer. So this is one that doesn't require an internet connection to your phone. We are able to just tap here to begin kind of the focus session, automatically running down to 25 minutes here by default. That being said, for some of the widgets, including weather, you have to first set up your location or city of choice over on the, again, companion app. And then it'll be updating this data from the internet, since, again, this is connected to your router uh, at this point. So it shows the current conditions in terms of temperature as well as the wind, humidity as well, and it's actually quite functional, although it's only for the current time it looks like. There's no forecast uh, looking ahead, but still definitely usable. Similarly for things like stock, you're able to select specific stocks from, again, that companion app page, but by default, it will show some of the top performers in tech, it looks like, including Microsoft, NVIDIA, Tesla, Apple, and then how they're doing. And you can also scroll down the list to take a look at kind of the S&P 500, so on and so forth. But you can curate, again, the list if you want to focus on specific stocks using that companion app. And there we go. We now have kind of a quick status page that tells us the current pricing for Bitcoin, Ethereum, Dogecoin, so on and so forth that you can also see at a glance. But there's no chart view it looks like on this. It's only a snapshot of this particular moment in time, but still works. Here is the to-do list, which very interestingly is using a web app called app.todoist.com, and it requires you to generate an API token that we can then copy and afterwards, it will basically sync with your Google Calendar. So if there's any upcoming appointments, it will then show up on the app over here accordingly, as well as Apple Calendar and also Outlook if you're using other services. Alternatively, you can just create different reminders on the UI Heroes homepage. And there we have it. That corresponding information has been now synced over, and now there's demo being showed up. And if we have completed this particular uh, item, we can click inside to check it off and there are no current tasks for today left, as you can tell there. 
and otherwise, aside from basic stat monitoring on your computer, which requires downloading a companion software to do so, sharing basically your RAM, as well as the thermals from your computer over to the mini dock via wireless, you can then take a look at settings and from here connect to other networks as well as change some of the display properties, for instance brightness, right now it's at 90%, and also the LED light strip. Right now we have breathing, but you can also go into other effects like this one called flowing water, ripple here on the very back, as you can tell from the right to the left, dancing back and forth, also looking quite neat. Another one here is called gradient, taking just a split second for it to activate and afterwards you can tell it's going to be a little more smooth and changing through the colors dynamically throughout the entire strip also looks neat and then you can also have it completely off if you don't like the RGB lights and by the way this is what 100% brightness looks like we can also dial it down as you can tell they're down to something like 10% as for the I.O. and the dock aspect, it also works pretty much as advertised. For instance, we can connect it to a Galaxy S series phone, and not only will we get fast charging, as you can tell there, but also we'll be able to connect to external monitors as well. Entering into the Samsung Dex mode, or aka desktop mode, uh, from our smartphone here, while it's charging at the same time. And it's all because we're connected to, again, the mini hub via that Type-C port, and the display here is connected via the HDMI port. Whether that's going to be Windows, Mac, or even Chrome OS, Linux, it's all going to be compatible with this pretty much a standard plug-and-play dock uh, in this particular instance. And it goes without saying that the other full-size USB Type-A port can be used for charging at the same time, or again, you can connect a keyboard or mouse as I.O., a thumb drive, and also the Ethernet for internet connectivity also works pretty much as advertised. Although maybe the only thing I would add would again be a second USB Type-A port and perhaps a 3.5mm audio jack would be nice as well. Those are two omissions on this current model, but pretty much the entire parameter has already been filled with the current I.O. selection. So that is more or less it as far as our quick hands-on review of the Vobot Mini Dock. Gotta say it's one of the coolest multifunctional, again, smart docks I've seen. Not only does it have the typical I.O. ports from display and charging, but in this case, again, just adding some more unique touches primarily with this screen. As for some nice-to-haves, maybe in a next-generation model, I would like to see the presence of some microphones. That could be neat for some voice command if they added another widget for something like Alexa or Google Assistant. I think that would be cool as well. And while on that topic, since AI is all the rage these days, if there's integration with a service like ChatGPT to kind of answer some quick questions on this device, that could also be neat as well as some type of either built-in speaker or a 3.5mm jack for just using it as maybe even an alarm clock or playing back music. Again, a very cool concept overall. You can check out more details if interested in the links down below, but for now that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been the neat Vobot Mini Dock Smart Multifunctional charging and display dock.